Welcome to the show, everybody. It's the Crypto Lark. I'm super excited to have with me today Yaroslav Kachina. He is the CEO over at Sofia TX. Welcome. Nice, nice to meet you. Now, for anybody who hasn't heard about Sofia TX yet, tell me the short version. Sofia TX is um, is a special project that we set ourselves to do about a year ago. We went public um, just before Christmas. We did the ICO. The primary purpose is to build a enterprise grade blockchain with all the tools necessary around it to make sure that the businesses can actually start leveraging the the blockchain capabilities for better collaboration, etc. Very cool. Very cool. It's 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 a good short elevator pitch we're going to dig into the details of exactly how all of this works now one of your big focuses is on sap what is that sap is a is an enterprise software which predominantly most of the companies basically use for accounting inventory management logistics sales it's the most dominant software in the world um statistics are extremely in their favor. So the reason why we have to make the blockchain work with it, basically we need to make sure that businesses can connect their systems, which very often is SAP or other software like Oracle, Microsoft Dynamics, et cetera, connect to the blockchain. So it's blockchain uh, capabilities can be used by businesses only if they can connect their own systems. And SAP is one of the biggest ones in that space. Fantastic. So really at SAP only? I mean, you mentioned some of the other uh, systems that some businesses use. Are those compatible as well or only SAP? One thing we have to, we have to uh, clarify is we're independent off of SAP, even though we know how to, how to work with it. Mm -hmm. And that's a very um, a strong background of our team. But we are independent of a particular software vendor such as SAP, and we also uh, are filling in the space where it means we can connect to all the other systems of, of the providers. And that's through, I would say, an, a connectivity platform or, or different APIs and SDKs in, in the, um, in the, in, in the um, marketplace, which will be published later. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Now, you're aiming to really improve some of the systems, I guess, by bringing blockchain in. So what are some of the advantages for a regular business out there to actually adopt blockchain? It's very similar to the way the consumers are starting to adopt the blockchain. It actually provides a better transparency, speed of exchanging information among the businesses. So what it does is it improves the capability to collaborate of the individual businesses. They can create stronger ecosystems. It's similar to the dot-com created a connectivity between either the businesses or the business and consumer. Blockchain now decentralizes a lot of these, um, I would say, features. And now we can create even newer version of the uh, dot-com, uh, um, I would say, business models. Very interesting. Yeah, I think there's so many applications out there for business and blockchain to come together. And uh, I see a lot of people and they think, well, you know, blockchain is very specific. It can only really function in certain things. But we see new use cases for blockchain coming out all the time. And I think that really business and blockchain are such a great fit for so many reasons. And of course, it really depends, I guess, on the business. So what industries or business types in particular do you really see benefiting from using the Sophia TX blockchain? We started looking into the business, the, I would say business use and the scenarios uh, some time ago, even before we explored the actual technology itself, because we need to make sure there is actually market for it. We have on purpose focused on non-financial sector because there is a lot of stuff in the coins and lending and insurance. So we actually focus on industrial companies, which is also our background, and particular industries which require better collaboration. They could be automotive industry, they could be a construction industry, energy industry. So very often it's industrial companies where, where the stronger integration or collaboration is required across the entire value chain. Very interesting. I think that's a space that definitely does need some attention as well. I mean, I just when I hear like, okay, you know, like uh, power companies, for example, like uh, great potential use cases, right? Or construction companies, again, great potential use cases here for that to come in. Excellent. So I want to know a bit more about how 
everything actually works, the mechanics of what you're offering. So I'm a business and I want to come and build with you, build a blockchain with you. Mm -hmm. How's that going to happen? Take, take me through the steps. I walk through your door, sell me on it. How are we going to do, make this happen for my business? So this is a, this is a, this is actually a, probably the best question I've got so far. We, what we do is we had a discussion, for example, yesterday with a media company and they say, okay, we have something we would like to do. So first we need to make sure that they understand what blockchain is, what it can do and what it should not be used for. And because blockchain has its own capabilities, mm -hmm. but it should not be used when the blockchain is not needed. So what do we do? Step one, let's make sure that the client understands what blockchain is, because that creates a foundation for a good productive discussion. Then we use a number of examples for, uh, I would say, where they could benefit from the blockchain. And then we create together a, I would say, a first concept that would make sense for them to start exploring and how they can change their business, either on the cost and efficiency side or on actually reshaping their business model. Because very often blockchain does allow the businesses to go after markets which they could not go before. Um, so just to summarize and, and uh, make it shorter, let's make sure there is an understanding of the blockchain. Let's go through a number of, um, I would say, examples how blockchain can benefit. And then let's jointly with the client explore how they would want to modify or upgrade their business with those capabilities. And then what comes out as a result is a proof of concept which is we have right now, I would say, three projects which we're trying to get to the stage of proof of concept where we have an actual working prototype. Great. That's that's really exciting, actually, here. There's you know, quite a few projects that are coming. People are, you're in the talks with them, and that's really cool. What are some of, I guess, maybe the unrealistic expectations that these companies have when they come in? I mean, I, I know that blockchain is really exciting right now, and we've seen some companies just say, hey, we're going to do something with blockchain or cryptocurrency. We don't really know, but our share prices will go up and this is great. What do you see as when customers come to you, I guess, what are they expecting that blockchain is going to do for them? And then kind of how is that meeting with reality? So far, we did not have a single customer which would come in with a, a clear picture of what they want to do. I think they're literally excited because of all the uh, Bitcoin news and crypto coins and ICOs and, as you said, uh, possibly saying it's a technology we have to understand. So we have not had a case where somebody says, this is what I want. So we really have to take them through this exploration uh, process, as I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. But one thing which is really good, once they start understanding that, you can see how the kind of a light bulb goes off and then they start thinking, oh, we could do this and we could do that. And they start literally designing their business on the fly. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so I think that they're exploring. Most of, the, most of the businesses are literally in the exploration phase. And this is why it is very important for us to have people which can uh, create these prototypes. If they can touch it, if they can feel it, then they can see how they can actually integrate it into their business and how it makes sense or doesn't. That's really interesting. There's so much scope for it. And, and I like the businesses are coming to you. They're hungry. They say, we've heard about the thing. What can it do for us? We, we don't know, but we, we, we don't want to miss it if it's really important for our businesses. And of course, it is important for the businesses. So the businesses that are coming to you now are yeah. already going to have that advantage. So that's really cool. We have, we have I mean, just to mention, we have approximately um, probably close to a dozen of different uh, I would say items in a pipeline. I just want to stay a bit. Uh, so they come from logistics, food, pharma, automotive, manufacturing. So literally energy. So literally across the entire spectrum of industries. But that's what we wanted. We want to build a cross industry platform, build it in a way where it becomes a Lego and then give it out to the entire ecosystem. So now they can use it. Mm -hmm. Our primary objective is to create a, a system, and by system I mean the collection of items which can be easy to adopt by the wider community of IT professionals and business businesses. Very cool, and of course the fact that uh, you know it's going to be compatible with systems that they already understand makes that much easier. Of course, mm -hmm. now you're going to be having a marketplace. Tell me what that marketplace is going to look like. What is going to be available there for the developer and for the people who are coming to you know build on you 
The, the, the marketplace is exactly what's missing in a lot of the um, blockchain projects today. I think that we, it goes back to the adoption. In order to, for blockchain, you know, to be adopted, you need to create a know-how and you need to create tools. Mm -hmm. So what we decided is to actually put them into the marketplace because it creates a motivation for the creators and for the users to basically trade with each other. So there you can create a small pieces of code, you can build entire applications, you can put their certain knowledge pieces, whether it would be process flows, process design, or entire, I would say, packages. But also people can then later on connect with each other and collaborate on projects. So it, it's creating an entire ecosystem on top of that particular blockchain, on top of Sophia TX. Because the blockchain itself, the net, the network would not be enough. So this is this is to drive the adoption and create a mechanism for allowing thousands or hopefully a way more than that actually to come and join and be well equipped to to understand it. Very interesting. By the way, what's uh, what was the inspiration for the name Sophia TX? Huh. Um, I've I've got this question very often, so I'm going to answer it like I always said it. It's not an ex girlfriend of anyone, <laughs> that I'm including myself. <laughs> Look, we were we were talking about this, and um, you know how how people think they come up with all the crazy names, and you, you never like them. And I think we just blurted out, let's just name it as a person, and we kind of liked it. It stick to it, but we said it's not uh, good enough. And then the the TX as a transaction exchange came in, so we say okay, so it's a it's a name called transaction exchange. But you know, having said that, we have actually reverse engineered. The, the Sophia abbreviation, which is a software operating platform for hybrid internet applications. I like it. I like it. Oh, I have the name. Let's make it work for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But look, I, I'm just being honest. And that, that's how it was born. That's but great, the though. One, the key word here is hybrid. And this is one thing that people need to understand. A lot of blockchain projects, they try to create blockchain only solutions. But I, we see, we, when we uh, looked into this, we, we see blockchain just another component of the wider digital strategy. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we kind of sneak in the, the word hybrid. We think blockchain needs to work with IoTs and AI and process automation, augmented reality with ERP systems or, or company systems. So it's just another component. That's why we're saying it's a hybrid platform. That's excellent. I think that's a really great point. It's not the uh, be all end all of everything it's it's one component a very interesting component but without a doubt without those other things coming in you'll quickly be left behind if you can leverage artificial intelligence and all these different ideas moving forward in the future there's a lot of power in what blockchain can do as as kind of a base now about your blockchain in specific what are the t more technical details of it i suppose you know what are you know the block times transaction speed all those things so, so this was this was part of the original idea, and and um, we actually went with um, a DPoS protocol, which is the delegated proof of stake. Reason for that is simply because it's uh, very fast. It doesn't necessarily need um, a lot of mining per se, but actually, it's validating quickly, moving on. From the business perspective, it's not the amount of energy that you want to consume, like in proof of work, which is Bitcoin, Ethereum. You actually want to keep it to minimum. What you really want is to go fast. So DPoS, we see it as one of the best uh, one of the best protocols. Um, so we picked the DAT, which is based on graphene from from MIT, from uh, Dan Larimer, and there is a number of very successful projects that they delivered. Mm -hmm. And then starting from graphene, what we wanted to build is a number of features which are really relevant for the enterprises. Um, currently there is, I'm not aware of the blockchain, which would be, let's call it certified for business use, which would be compliant, which companies could literally accept into the, as just another system. So what we want to make sure is that it has all the bells and whistles around the blockchain then it gets certified and compliant and then the entry into the businesses small or large is going to be way easier because companies they need certified software they cannot have just something and nobody knows what it does what's on the back end and it's not supported it has to be compliant and properly serviced uh, tool in order for the business to go with it very cool and i think that's i guess comes back to uh I to an extent, my next question was going to be was, you know, it's, it's an, you're saying it's an enterprise grade blockchain. 
and so I think that's, that's kind of part of that, without a doubt, you know, looking for really solutions for businesses for mm -hmm. the blockchain, which is great. Great to see that kind of thought already there. Now, delegated proof of stake has really proven itself over time, not as much as, of course, the, you know, Bitcoin blockchain has proven itself security wise, but certainly proof of stake has uh, been a pretty good model over time. So without a doubt, I think it's robust for, especially for the purposes that you're working on. Now, will this be a public blockchain? I know that a lot of businesses out there, they have, they don't want to know, or they don't want their competitors to know what they're doing, or there's maybe some transactional secrets that they don't want to be public. How are you going to ensure the privacy for your clients across the blockchain? So one thing I have to make clear, and it was not necessarily in a white paper explained, um, is our primary purpose is to build public blockchain. And a public blockchain is the true essence of the blockchain as such because it allows open system to collaborate. That's either from business to business or business to consumer. So that's one thing. So we are building Sophia TX as a public blockchain, and it's going to have full encryption capabilities actually the prototypes we've done is where the whole records are actually encrypted they are uh, so so it's reasonably I would, it's actually fully fully secure just like today when you send an email it goes through service you're not worried who is mm -hmm. reading it so so that's one thing that's the public part in the further capabilities of the Sophia TX we are actually going to be offering private blockchain capabilities um, the reason why we chose public is because it's easier to turn public into the private and then vice versa. So that's technology reason. Second reason is also because we believe in the public. Public is the real, uh, true disruptive collaborative tool. However, there will be some businesses which will on, um, I would say consortium base or on um, private basis, they will want to have a private capability. At that point, what we will do is we will create a, a contract for the amount of tokens to make sure that the public uh, gets compensated, should I say, mm -hmm. for the private uh, capabilities. And this is all packaged in a way to be a full service provider and a full service capabilities to the businesses. We cannot say we're going to do left or right. We have to provide all capabilities that are going to be needed. Otherwise, we would just basically open up to the competition to come in and take mm. that. So, I said otherwise, half the customers will walk through your door, just right back out the door, guys. No, no business for you here. So yeah, of course, I have to be flexible. It's great to see that you've thought about how can we make this flexible for our customers? What can we do to accommodate them, basically, which is, of course, what businesses are going to want. Mm -hmm. Now, what about your token? What exactly does the token do? Is it simply a settlement layer or is it more than that? It's um, when, you, when you think about the components which we're building, there is a blockchain, there is a, um, develop, there is a marketplace, and then there's other things. So basically, you're creating a a model, um, I would say a business model. So the business model requires token as a fee to compensate for the transactions, mm -hmm. then token as a, as a capability to secure the subscription for the platform and possibly create a, a number of a kind of a, a per click micro transactions for some objects. You could also use it as a trading token for uh, buying and selling the assets in the marketplace. And eventually, I'm, you know, we're playing around with it. I mean, technically it's possible. We need to see if it has a actual, I would say legal backing in the future. And if it has a, a business meaning, it can be used even as a transaction currency in the individual, um, in the individual um, business scenarios, but it's mm -hmm. payment or, or so, but that's not, that was not our original uh, intent. Um, we want to go from the ground up, transaction fee, uh, coin in the marketplace, micropayments and or buying selling assets in the or goodies in the uh, marketplace. Well, that's already a lot of utility. I guess if you can add in yeah. at some point in the future saying, hey, by the way, you can pay business to business using our, our, our tokens here. Well, that's great, but already it's already got a lot of utility within your ecosystem. So that's 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 enough for now, I think. Now, what about your competition? Oh, go ahead. Just I just wanted to clarify. Once you have a token, how you use it is it's there. It's in a blockchain. It's so you can trade it for whatever you actually choose. So it becomes a, it becomes really a very universal tool. And that's, I think, what's making blockchain very powerful today. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's an easy transfer of uh, value from one place to another, without a doubt. Whether you know companies independently decide to use that, that's of course a different thing. Now, who do you see as being your biggest competition in this space? Because there's a lot of different projects out there offering enterprise solutions for blockchain. So, who mm -hmm. do you see as being big competition? So, um, there will be always the traditional players like IBM, SAP and the others, uh, because they will uh, create blockchain capabilities. So far, they go down the private path. So far, they go down the uh, blockchain as a service, so cloud, which is, uh, in our view, still uh, somewhat limiting to really fully take advantage. Very often, the large companies, they go into this uh, high and expensive um, I would say, um, segment, then it makes it unaffordable for mid-size all the way down to the value chain. Let's see how that plays out. So that's definitely um, a competition. But frankly, I'm honored to compete with those big uh, companies. Then then second part is there will be probably a number of small uh, blockchain startups which will try to go either our way or similar. So far, we have not noticed a single one which we would uh, consider an actual competition. Mm -hmm. Now, if I have to be super frank, there is uh, thousands of uh, blockchain startups. If the right mix could happen, they could convert. But it's not about the blockchain or a product. It's about a combination of product, timing, skills to work with the clients, and then take, the, take those ideas all the way to the actual use and adoption. And this is where I think that our commercial strategy is also very unique. And that's why we're not actually disclosing all of it uh, Guys are asking, what about this? What about that? We need to take its course because the minute I tell the community, the minute our potential competition or potential copy uh, projects might be born. So we are really taking it on the execution level. Let's stick to the basics. That's it. It's, I guess it's business, right? So you got to uh, you know protect your secrets uh, to an extent. Yeah. Um, now, of course, there's other blockchain projects in the space, but they're not exactly doing... It the way you guys are doing you know we have stratus and neblio for example and they're offering enterprise solutions too but you guys are going a little bit different with the focus on sap let me ask you a slightly different question then which blockchain project do you most admire i i got mostly intrigued um there's a number of them which i kind of learned from i really like the one which is hyperledger which is the a collaboration of a number of uh, large companies I think that as a collaboration for the blockchain capabilities, it's a great source of info. It's a great um, collaboration, but then it is not a blockchain per se. Then the business are going to take things out of it and then build their own solutions. So it's more of a collaboration effort. I also think that um, the, the DPOS projects done by the original team, you know, EOS, and those are actually quite. Um, I would say high potential cases once the kind of a regulation comes into play and, and so on. I think some of the older generation blockchains, particularly proof of work, I think they're becoming more of a collector's item. That's my personal view. Mm -hmm. I see Bitcoin more as a collector's item than than the, um, I would say, a strength, a strong technology for a future. And that's why I think there are a lot of a, a more modern blockchain technologies have been born recently. So, you know, who wouldn't admire blockchain like uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Hyperledger, uh, also some of the DPOS where we uh, graphene based, uh, which I think is the, the right way to go about that. Okay, excellent. Interesting answers for sure. I mean, obviously the stuff that uh, Dan Larimer has done with BitShares and the Steam blockchain, and now of course they're doing with the EOS blockchain. Very admirable projects indeed, certainly some of the top ones in the space. I wanna know about your team. So what is it, what's the experience of your team and what gives your team sort of that competitive edge in the marketplace? Mm -hmm. what, we, what we actually do with the team, and, and again, a website is not up to date because we've been completely changing it from the IC. We're redoing the website. So in terms of the team, we need to look at it as a, as a, as a comprehensive uh, attempt to build a business or, or plan to build a business where there's a technology people but they also have to be a, a strong marketing people. They have to be strong design because at the end of the day, we need to take blockchain ideas and productize them. So we need strong uh, product management and design people. 
with commercial sense. And then we also need people which will work with the clients, whether it's on the kind of a technical sales type or it's actually a, a project consultants, which would be coming in from kind of a big four, big six type of companies, uh, technology leaders. So it's all about having the capabilities to fully service the client from technology to hand, kind of holding their hand and, and getting them through the transformation journey. And the last bit is because we are not building a blockchain, we're building an ecosystem with the blockchain in it. So then we need to build uh, or have people which can actually effectively enable this ecosystem to, to perform. Very cool. Now, I'm glad you answered part of that because my next question is going to be, hey, the website has a small team. Have you been hiring? So that's, that's good to hear that, you know, that the website will be updated and we will be seeing more people kind of added on there as we go on. I, okay, wanted... I, can, give you, I can give you an indication roughly of the size right now. We had a, a week ago, we had a, a get together for um, like a, a, a after work um, drinks. Um, we actually had 35 people in the room, which one way or another work with us already. Um, I think 80% of those are full time. Mm -hmm. So we brought in a number of technical people. We brought in a number of marketing people. So we're kind of ramping up. Awesome. That's great to hear. Now you have a, uh, I guess, kind of a close relationship, or you can tell me about how the relationship is between you and the team over at Descent. Mm -hmm. So uh, it goes back to the history. When when um, Descent was um, um, a startup which chose DPoS as a protocol, so graphene-based network for the content distribution, and we are ex-SAP, ex-kind of a digital transformation people with international experience. And under our strategy, we started talking together and see, can we make the sense out of this? So so the two, two, two skill sets came together and the Sofia TX was born, including the name and the plan and everything else. But now we are building Sofia TX as a completely independent unit, as an independent company. Because, um, because what is important is that while we collaborate with Decent or, or a number of other companies, we actually want to make sure this is a self-sustainable team. It's a self-sustainable business. It's got uh, years ahead of it in terms of the work. So we need to build it as, a, as a something that can survive all these uh, crypto crazy waves, including the competition coming in from business. So whatever is happening, it's, it's being built as a proper professional uh, business. Very cool. I, th I think that's a good forward-looking mentality too. This is going to take years to really reach what we want it to reach, and then we'll take it from there. Now, speaking of years ahead into the future, I want to talk about your roadmap. So how have you been meeting your goals so far? Have you been successful in meeting all the goals that you've set out as far as timeline-wise? And what are some of the challenges moving forward and some of the plans for Sophia TX moving forward? Overall, overall, um, we're actually very happy, very pleased, despite the fact that some technical capabilities here and there show up in terms of um, late onboarding of people or so. But overall, we've been able to deliver everything which was supposed to be done in Q1 um, is pretty much done. We actually even took some extra effort. So, for example, a blockchain explorer on, on Graphene is not that easy. Um, so we actually have uh, rebuilt it. We're just finalizing it. So we're already doing some things extra, despite the fact that we are ahead of the schedule. We have moved up the, the release of the mainnet all the way to July-ish because we have uh, at least one or two customers which would like to benefit from it. Let's see, let's see if you get it. But we actually moved that date. So for us, the the first half of 2018 is get all the basics done, marketplace development platform, the blockchain, the mainnet, make sure that we swap all the tokens and everything else. And the second half go way stronger into the uh, servicing the client, driving the adoption and building way more and more people that will be in the, um, what we call partnership programs and, and collaborators. Very cool. It's, it's glad, I'm glad to hear that the main nets even being moved up, that I think that shows a lot of really great progress. And of course, having all that team on board, very beneficial in, trying to reach those kind of goals. Very, very interesting. And now, I guess the final thing is, what's the plan on communicating the message? I mean, you don't, you don't have to share all the secret sauce, of course, but what is the main idea of how are you going to get out there and connect with businesses and say, hey, come over here and build on Sophia TX. Don't go to Stratus. Don't go to another project. 
Yeah. So, so how we differentiate ourselves is is one of those ways. Also, how we go to the business. Um, one right now we have enough of requests of people that actually says, "Can I explore with you what the blockchain does and how can I benefit from it?" Looks like uh, our brand is starting to be spread, um, kind of through word of mouth and the social media and the typical crypto and IT community. We want to be more actively engaged in 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 that and particularly throughout the IT community, so the IT executives and, and business leaders, et cetera. But one of the really more, more, more important things is to actually build a real blockchain and product or prototype at least to the point where the businesses can touch it. Today, getting a client is a, a long cycle because they don't know what the blockchain is, as I mentioned at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So part of our um, new setup is we're building a small innovation lab slash expo where we can take the client and walk him through what is a blockchain what can be used for a hey, look there is a sensor scan look it's in the block so they can literally smell it touch it walk through it they can realize what the blockchain can be used for and and then basically use that uh, innovation lab as an accelerated way to develop business models and blockchain use cases with them so we want to be very focused and hopefully this focus on quality and innovation then throughout properly conferences and the media is going to take off and, and we're going to get noticed even more so. That's great. The, the idea about the labs really makes me uh, excited because that's exactly what you need to connect these people, make it real for them to make them understand, hey, this is what it is. Because a lot of people, they've heard blockchain, maybe. Some businesses, they kind of, oh, that's that thing out there. So actually to walk them through it, I think is a fantastic thing. Now, last question for you for today. If somebody wants to reach out, you know, whether it be a business or community members to ask questions, how can they best get in contact with you? Look, we are very active on uh, Telegram and a bunch of other social media. So the contacts are there. It's, it's actually very quick. Website, same way. Um, there is an email either directly to, to myself, yaroslav.kachina at sofiatx.com, or as I said, website, Telegram, any of the channels so far have are working. And then we're going to see who is in the team, the best to address the particular um, request. Okay, fantastic. I'll put links for uh, the main website and for the Telegram group down below. So if anyone wants to get in contact, they can go ahead and click down there. But Yaroslav, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with us today. I think anybody who hasn't heard about Sofia TX has got a really great idea of what you guys are trying to do. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Pleasure to uh, be, be here.